was recording. There we go. So let's go to gg.gg forward slash r10cte. And what that'll do is allow us to, um, to access some documents that you'll need. Uh, now you don't necessarily have to have them for today's meeting, but if you wanted to use them, uh, it wouldn't hurt. So uh, if we go under House Bill 5 Basics and Endorsements and we open that tab, it's going to open up and it's going to have a series of documents that you'll see me use today. Uh, we'll touch on the clusters document. It just is a visual representation of the 16 career clusters that we utilize. Um, the 1718 version of the chapters uh, 74, 12, and 13, this is going to include the new classes. Uh, that are expected to hit our uh, Texas Administrative Code for graduation uh, coming up like September, October. We're waiting for that to be produced by TEA. Um, it was approved by SBOE. They might need to make some slight changes to it, given all the bills that were recently signed into law in June uh, by the governor. So just be patient. Uh, we're still going to uh, be going off of 74, 11 through 14. But right now, the only version online that's accessible is from last year. And we have not seen the updated student attendance accountability in the handbook either. Um, so we're waiting to see that as well. Now, once again, if you're just now joining me, uh, please, if you could, if, if you want, go to gg.gg forward slash r10cte. Once again, if you're joining me and you hear noise in the background, do not be disturbed. There's nothing wrong with your computer. I am remotely um, accessing the internet from a Starbucks in Central Texas because I am on the road today. Uh, so if you hear a little background noise, uh, never fear, there's nothing wrong with your computer. We're just um, making things happen. So here's some documents that we're gonna be going over. We'll start with 74.3 here in a minute. The CO22, please feel free to download all these, create a file. Today's presentation is available to you uh, right here. Uh, that is the, um, the PPT for today, um, for today's session. If you'd like that, you'd like to have that on your um, on your drive there. So you can open up and follow along or you can just follow the screen, which, which I'm going to be sharing because I'm going to be throwing a lot at you. Uh, somebody recently described uh, one of my sessions as drinking from a fire hydrant. I do apologize. I do throw a lot of information out. I apologize if it seems um, a little bit uh, overwhelming. Uh, if you if you look at our uh, slideshow, You'll find, let me go back over to that. I'm sure you can see that. You'll find at the very last slide is our my email contact. I'm also going to uh, share with you today Jason Cooper's email. Uh, Jason's my uh, constituent at Region 10 for CTE. He just joined us recently um, from Irving ISD. He is a stellar, stellar CTE administrator. Uh, so I'll be making sure I share that email with you as well so you have two people to reach out to. Um, Let's go ahead and go to uh, CO22. I want to talk about the CO22 document. And uh, I'm going to open it actually from my file so it opens a little faster here. So we'll do the CO22. And uh, the reason I like this document so much, if you're not familiar with it, some of you are and some of you aren't, uh, it allows us to look at all 16 career clusters. And I'll tell you what, let's do one thing before we go there. Let's look at the 16 career clusters really quick to give you a visual representation of what I'm talking about here. So when we talk about the 16 career clusters, uh, these are the 16 career clusters that are identified by the Texas Workforce Commission, and they are identified by the um, U.S. Labor Department. Now, it doesn't matter what avenue a kid takes, a student takes, it doesn't matter if they never take a CT class or not, eventually they're gonna fall into one of these 16 career pathways. So when you're preparing for a student to graduate, be it band, um, ROTC, or a form of CTE classes, uh, as according to the U.S. Labor Department, the Texas Workforce Commission, there are 16 possible career fields that kids can fit into, uh, or students, I say young men and women. Um, so just that's to give, to give us an idea of what we're dealing with. Now, when I get into the CO22 and I start talking about different classes, every subject area has a particular um, section or chapter within the CO22 document. That's the PEMS data document that gives us the service ID codes. Now, um, when we get into the CO22, you'll see that there are 16 chapters directly uh, related to this page here, 
We have 16 chapters in chapter 130 where we find the teaks and the information for, C, uh, for uh, CTE. And then there's the 17th chapter, and that 17th chapter is 127. And that's where we used to house problems and solutions, but that'll become project-based learning. And uh, it's where we house like a career prep and practicum. And it's also where we house our middle school classes for CTE. So there are actually 17 chapters in CTE, but 16 of them are directly related to specific career fields identified by the Labor Department and the Texas Workforce Commission. So let's get back out of that document. Um, and I'm going to go into the CO22. And it, just to give everybody a rundown, I'll talk about PEAM service ID codes and getting the right one. And there's like, when we get into foreign language, we're going to be dealing with a uh, cultural and linguistics topics. Let me find that class. Uh, I'll have to, maybe I'll have to find it later, but what I wanted to use was an example. Um, an example of, uh, we'll just start here with agriculture. We wanted to use an example of an eight digit code. So if any of your students who are gonna take principles of agriculture, food, natural resources, would be housed under the PEAM service ID code of 1300 And that is the eight digit code that allows us to identify that course no matter where they go in the state. Now the way this document is set up, it's very helpful. If you're an administrator or a CTE, um, lead teacher, whatever, please make sure you keep this document handy, download it, keep it on your desktop, create a file called Region 10 CTE, somewhere you can find it easily. And anytime someone's talked to you about a course and they say, hey, I want to teach this production of livestock or something of that nature, even if they don't get the, the name right, really what you need is that number. Because when you type it in, and that's the 1300-0300, so when we type in 1300-0300, it's going to highlight that course for us. And you can do that. And if you get a kid's transcript in, a student's transcript, and you don't know what the acronym on a report card or their student academic record is, uh, you can use that acronym and plug it in. And it'll highlight the acronym that you're using. So if you didn't know what live prod mean, meant and you put in live prod, it would take you to it. Now, to give you an idea of how it works, we can actually come back up and hit this. And then if we come over here and we say, oh, that's what we typed in, it automatically takes you back down to where you were at. Um, so that's just a really good use for the uh, uh, CO22 to get you an idea of what classes are where and what their numbers are. Uh, there are 16 chapters, once again, as we looked at our, um, our uh, 16 career fields. And if you notice, when you get over to the CO22, Agriculture, Food, Natural Resources is directly aligned with Agriculture, Food, Natural Resources. And this is taken from the Texas Workforce Commission, the U.S. Labor Department. Um, so when you're using that CO22, I really highly advise or recommend that always get an eight-digit code when you're talking about the classes so you know exactly what that is. Now, the other reason I use it is when I'm looking up certifications in Chapter 231 of the Texas Administrative Code, if we wanted to see who could teach this Principles of Agriculture class, uh, we would come back over. You could actually go to my page if you like. And let's go to the CT programming main page. It should have a chapter 231 um, link to it. There we go, chapter 231. So on the very front page, the first page you come into, when you open up the gg.gg forward slash uh, R10 CTE. And for those just joining us, let me go back over to the slide. This is the address. If you want to download any of the documents I have today or the slideshow, uh, go to gg.gg forward slash R10 CTE. Um, but what we'll do here is we're going to go visit chapter 231 for a second so I can show you what happens when I look up certifications. So I get to go over here to the certification link. It takes me into chapter 231. I like to open it from this side because it allows me to see every teaching certification out there. I'm going to come down until I start to see agriculture. Now, what you'll see is I want you to notice when we start looking up ag certifications, there are one, two, three, four, five, six possible bubbles for us to click on. But when you get to look at how many classes exist in ag, let's look at how many pages. So out of the 243 CTE classes that are going to come out this year, a large portion comes out of ag. If you notice, we're still on ag. Even though we only have six areas we can choose from to look at certifications, we have two and a half pages that result in ag classes. So when I go back over to the chapter 231, then I just start clicking. And sometimes you get it's a best guess. The class might fall under the first one, 231, 281. So if I, if I wanted to teach advanced 
environmental technology or equine science or food processing or food technology, and I'm sure you get the drift here. These are the three certification areas. So if it says it in this manner, agriculture, food, natural resources, grade six through 12, it has to read identically to this on the transcript, on the teacher uh, certification transcript. If it reads like this, any vocational agriculture certification, if that says vocational agriculture in any means, then that particular teacher can teach that class. Recently, I had one that was a uh, business secretarial certification, and there was a plethora of classes that that certification could teach. Even though that's a certification from the early 90s, late 80s, um, that would allow uh, someone to teach financial math. There's a plethora of things, because when you get down into the finance section, you'll see much like that ag. Uh, let me cruise down here so I can just show you about these certifications. And to say I wanted to teach, excuse me, say I wanted to teach some business classes. So BIM1, BIM2, um, global business. If you notice, it says any business or office. So if you had someone that had a business secretarial certification, they could they would legally be able to teach that class. Uh, not to get too far out there, let's get back to where we were at. So back to that CO22. The CO22 contains all classes to include if we were going to talk about physical education and let's just say we we're going to talk about that credit we can give for um, participating in uh, drill team so I type in drill and it's going to take me to the PE substitution for drill uh, just a real quick note on that when we get into 7412 we'll talk about PE credits and I'll get back to that so I'm going to go ahead and close out on that when I want to get over to 7412 uh, here in a second, but we're first we're going to go to 74.3. The reason I'm showing you 74.3 is I quite often get que questions as to what are we required by law to teach as a school district. And 74.3 is where you find that information. Um, and that is on the Texas Education Agency's website. You can look at it here, or I have copies of it on my website. And what this is, is 74.1 is the, it'll always reference when you get to 74.3, if you notice it says, a school district that offers grades 9 through 12 must provide instruction and require curriculum as specified in 74.1. It also says it for middle school if you reference the 74.1 criterion. Now, when we get to 74.1, that's a holistic approach to, you're going to teach English, math, and science, and social studies, and you're going to offer enrichment programs. So 74.1 is just an uh, a guidance for the fact that we are going to offer enrichment. We're going to offer the four core. 74.3 is when we get into specifics about what we're gonna offer. So it says right here, the district must ensure that beginning students who enter the sixth grade in 2010 school year, each student completes one Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills based fine arts course in grades six, seven, or eight. So now that's a requirement. Any kid who entered 2010 or after uh, in the sixth grade would be required to complete a fine arts credit course um, before completion of the eighth grade. But I'm going to focus on the 9 through 12 today. So it says a school district that offers grades 9 through 12 must provide instruction in the required curriculum as specified in 74.1 of this title. I'm going to break for a second. I see I have 18 participants. If you just join me and you're hearing background noise, it's nothing. there's nothing wrong with your computer. I am at a Starbucks in Central Texas, and I'm doing this remote. So um, – let me know if it works out or if it just bugs you. I apologize if the, if the background noise gets to you, uh, but we're going to keep moving forward. The district must ensure that sufficient time is provided for teachers to teach and for students to learn the subjects in the required curriculum. What that means is that you probably ought to have the classes aligned directly with the amount of credit. Usually if it's a half a credit class, the state of Texas holds that it takes one semester to teach. If it is a one credit class, the state of Texas TEA and the people who write the teats are holding that that class needs 45 to 89 minutes in a single class period. So if you run a 50 minute bell schedule, that's fine. If you're on block and you're blocking in 90 minute periods, you know, five times over two weeks, two on one week and three on the next, you're going to be fine as well. Um, but that's what that means is just give them time to learn the curriculum and give the teachers time to teach it. And it's a, it's a, a, a recommendation. So if you wanted to teach a half a credit for the whole year and draw CTE funding all year, you could do such. If you wanted to teach, say, welding two or welding one for two credits in just first period and 50 minutes, you could do that and draw a single period of CTE funding. You wouldn't qualify for two credits of CTE funding. 
or two hours, you would qualify for one hour of CT funding. The state of Texas does not tie seat time to credit. Uh, and I know that's a, a statement that catches people off guard. It's been repeated by both Diane Salazar and Ron Woodson out of CTE. I've heard it from Kelsey Kling um, for TEA. Those All three of those personnel are from TEA, and they'll agree with that statement. So credit isn't tied to seat time. If you have any specific questions about that, please do not hesitate to email me. My email address will be shown at the end of our conference here. Now, as we move forward, uh, we notice that we have to offer English language arts. So if you're a high, if you're currently teaching, uh, offering ninth through 12th grade classes, you have to offer English one, English two, English three, English four, and at least one additional advanced English course. Now, if you're a new school, like I have some charters that are just in the ninth and 10th grade, then you must offer ninth and 10th grade. You're not going to necessarily need to offer senior classes because you don't necessarily have seniors yet. So if you're a charter or school, or a ninth grade center, then you need to offer what is ninth grade curriculum. It's nine through 12 when you start going into three and four for English or algebra two and things of that nature. So what you can't get away from offering is English one, two, three, and four and an additional English course, an advanced English course. And you can't get away from offering credit in algebra one, algebra two, geometry, pre-cal and math models. Now I got a lot of schools that like to replace math models with ag math and natural resources. That's really cool. It's a good thing to do. If you go over and you look, let's go back over. I'm going to jump out of my comfort zone here for a minute and yours too. I'm going to go back over to, um, to my, um, to my Google page. So let me get back over to the Google page. And what I want to show you is if we go up to the house bill five section, and this is a gg.gg r10 or forward slash r10 cte if you're just joining me um, that's the address if you want to find these documents gg.gg forward slash r10 cte now let me get back over that way sorry i'm hitting buttons here i don't need to hit um when we get back over here to our region 10 planning here we go there we are um, I go into the House Bill 5 basics and endorsements. It's going to have today's slideshow once again and other information. So if you want to download today's PPT that's right there and all the information I've been talking about. Now, um, one of the things I want to show you is the core academic document. So if you want to download this CTE core academic document, it is currently a draft. Um, it does not supplant Chapter 231, but it does include links to Chapter 231. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over to, let me find that. There we go. I'm going to open that document and it's the, it's titled core academic CTE. Let me make that a little bigger for you. So if y'all can see that, there we go. Um, let me get that percentage up a little bit there. Boom. There we are. So um, these are the classes currently coming into the 2017, 18 school year. There are 24 core slash CTE classes that are, a total of 26 um, PEAM service ID codes. As you notice, scientific research and design one, two, and three has a different PEAMS code for each section. Um, one of the things I like to do, a quick note on this one, if you have dual credit science classes at a college and you go look at the TEKS, these are very generic scientific research and design TEKS. Any college class could qualify as scientific research and design and meet the TEKS if you uh, meet with the college uh, adjust your uh, MOU, which is your memorandum of understanding, your agreement you have with the college to award both dual credit and high school credit for a particular class taught by college board standards. And yes, you can draw uh, full-time CT funding if you're meeting the 45 minute uh, requirement per class period because a college professor housed under the Southern College Board uh, is uh, allowed under chapter five of the Student Attendance Accountability Handbook, section 5.2 to uh, accrue uh, CTE funding. So what I was wanting to talk about, and I know I went around the world there on you, is the certification for math applications, agriculture, food, natural resources. This class is essentially 85% algebra and 15% geometry. Most of us use math models to help a kid that's struggling with TSI or EOCs. And then on the back side of that, I've seen schools use it just to put a senior in math. So they have something to put them in. Well, I'm going to recommend two courses. Once a kid completes algebra two, you need Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2 currently on the way we're set up. That's a really great way to do it because Algebra 2 satisfies all the requirements above the uh, basic plan 
to get the endorsement and to get the DLA, the single level of achievement. You cannot put a kid in your top 10%. I will show you where that rule is written in the Texas Education Code later down the road here in my slideshow, unless they are a DLA kid, a distinguished level of achievement. That basically means they need an endorsement because you got to have four sciences and four maths, and they need to have algebra two. So if you have four math, four science, to include algebra two and an endorsement, your distinguished level of achievement, according to 74, chapter 74 of the 11 of the Texas Administrative Code. Now when we click on the link, you're gonna see that there's a plethora of people who can teach this class. It can be taught by Agriculture, Food, Natural Resources, six through 12. If you're gonna use this certification, it'll read just like this. Masters of Math, Math seven through 12, Math eight through 12. This is not a certification if you're joining me and you're not familiar with certifications. This is not a math, physical science, or engineering. This is a math slash physical science slash engineering for grades six through 12 and the same with eight through 12. So if you're gonna use seven or eight, it needs to read on the person's uh, certification uh, paperwork exactly verbatim, math, physical science, engineering, six through 12. Anytime you see a grade at the back of the certification that's not surrounded in uh, quotations, there are not quotations, that would be parentheses, um, then it's gotta be written holistically like that. If it's a master's in math and it said nine through 12, eight through 12, seven through 12, you'd be pretty safe. I would, I would dare say eight through 12 or nine through 12 is gonna be your norm. Down here, secondary mathematics as well, seven through 12, eight through 12, six through 12. The reason it's in parentheses, as long as you can teach a uh, multitude of grade levels, because now they're adding different certifications and changing some of the monikers on those. Now, I'm gonna get out of that and then, uh, let me go back to my form, and I'm going back to the form that we went to that was called CTE Core Academic. I wanna talk about financial math for a minute. If you have seniors who have already completed Algebra One, Geometry, and Algebra Two, and you're looking for a meaningful math, and they don't wanna go into pre-cal or calculus or trig or any of that thing, you know, some students act like they're allergic to math with letters. Um, you can have them, te you can teach financial math. If you look at the teaks, it'll blow your socks off. Uh, the teaks include, uh, interest rates, it includes uh, managing your checking account, having to break down what a checking account looks like, credit cards, buying a car, self-employment taxes, filing a 1099, filing a um, W-2, or you know, reading a W-2, uh, filing the, um, any of the tax forms. It goes through that, it's, a, it's almost like they created an entire class for a kid 18 to 27 years old that needs to know everything to be successful financially going forward. Um, and seeing that we're currently 1.26 plus trillion dollars in student loan debt and about 750 billion dollars plus in credit card debt as a nation, it, college is a really expensive place for kids to go figure out what they want to do. Uh, so please, uh, by all means, get them into classes that help manage their money and get them onto endorsements that help them understand if they like or don't like a curricular, a particular career field. Because it's just as important to know what you don't like moving forward into careers as much as it is to know what you do like. All right, so back to the slideshow. And I'm gonna touch one more time on 74.3. I apologize if I'm bouncing on you. It's just kind of how I like to do things so I can touch on a lot of items. This session's being recorded. Don't panic, don't have to write things down. Uh, this session will be sent forward to our people online uh, this, this weekend, and it'll be posted on the internet for you to go back and review as many times as you would like on our um, uh, YouTube site, uh, posted most likely by Monday afternoon. But we'll kick that out onto our listserv. And before we finish today, I will show you where you can, or either email me and tell me to put you on the listserv, or I'll show you where to sign up for our listserv if you are not currently receiving listserv messages. So let's talk about the uh, 74.3 required secondary curriculum. I'll give you one example. I had a charter school one time that called and said, hey, we have a kid that has a credit in biology and they have a credit in astronomy and they want to graduate on the foundations without endorsement. So they only need three sciences and they have a half a credit of uh, IPC, but we don't offer IPC. Can we mix that class with a different class and I had to inform them that unfortunately no, and I'll show you in the rule under 7412, where you're not allowed to mix the sciences for, you can mix the sciences for that at fourth level or at third and fourth level science, but there's two sciences that can't be mixed. One is biology, and the other one is the second lab-based science you have to have one credit in. 
they didn't physically offer a teacher with a classroom for IPC, but it did not absolve them or excuse them from offering IPC. So we ended up putting the kid in an online class, which is totally allowable and meets the requirement to design permanent flexible learning arrangements for developably mentally appropriate instruction for supportive populations and supportive attainment and grade level standards. Also look at this, including mixed age programs. So if you have somebody that you wanted to teach BIM one and BIM two, and you're gonna teach ninth and 10th graders, that's totally acceptable. And that meets the law and the rule is allowed for that in 74.3 of the student of the uh, Texas administrative code. And I'm not gonna go into detail on a lot of this. I'll just let you know, you know, the social studies is pretty simple. You gotta have these. And then let's focus on CTE. You have to offer at least three of the following 16 career clusters. If you need help establishing three of your career clusters, please let me know and I will definitely help you out with that. Um, and I'll, like I said, I'll be supplying you with my email and cell phone number, or excuse me, telephone number at the end of the session. Some of you do have my cell phone number, by the way. But um, let's get back over to the slideshow. I hope you're comfortable with 74.3. That's where we just, we talk about required curriculum. Offering it and having it on your campus are two different options, or two different conversations. Yes, you have to offer this curriculum. No, you don't have to have a teacher in a classroom to do it. You can offer it in a multitude of ways. Online instruction is one of them. Test for credit is another. Um, and I have information on test for credit if you want to learn what that's about. Now, let's talk about TAC 7411. TAC 7411, and that links directly to the TEA website, is the, the very first chapter of the House Bill 5 Foundation's graduation. So when I open that up and I'm looking at it, there we go, and it should come up for you. 7411, it talks about to receive a high school diploma. Remember, this hasn't been updated, so this still looks the same as last year and it's going to. And it just talks about how a, school, a student earns a high school diploma. And it shows that a school district shall clearly indicate distinguished level of achievement under Foundation's high school program and endorsement and performance acknowledgements on the transcript or academic record. You do not have to put anything on the diploma. It needs to go on the academic transcript that the principal signs. So don't worry about putting it on the diploma, only worry about including it in the transcript. I've been asked, do we have to list all the performance acknowledgements? Uh, technically you should. So if you've got a student who's knocking out a bunch of AP exams, uh, you might end up having to go in and and manually put in those performance acknowledgements. Uh, you can reach out to me if you need help on that or any information uh, regarding the requirements for performance acknowledgements and endorsements. You only have to list an endorsement and it says a performance acknowledgement on the transcript. <clears throat> well, if the kid's taking a bunch of performance uh, acknowledgement type, uh, completing those requirements, I would dare say the parent's gonna wanna see them on the transcript. Um, so make sure that your local policies ad address that performance acknowledgement. Now, a student entering the ninth grade in 2014 or thereafter shall enroll in courses necessary to uh, complete requirement curriculums for foundation high school program, 74, and the curriculum for at least one endorsement. They do not have the right to come out from the under, under the endorsement program until the completion of the sophomore school year. So if a student comes up or a parent goes, well, why does my kid have to be on an endorsement? And they are an academic sophomore or an academic freshman, the rule is housed in 7411D and also C as well. And it says a student may graduate under the foundation's program without earning endorsement after their sophomore year. In the state of Texas under UIL rules, five credits makes you helps you become a academic sophomore, 10 credits completed helps you become an academic junior. Some districts elect to do six and 12. Please, please, please consult your district's policies your handbooks to determine how many credits a student needs to complete to be considered an academic 11th grader. Once they are an academic junior, they may then opt out of the endorsement. Now, here's another thing. The student parent, the student's parent or person in relation to the student files with the counselor written permission on a form adopted by TEA. We do have a copy of that TEA form we can supply you with. I'll look, if it's not on the website, we'll get it on there allowing for a student to graduate under the program without earning an endorsement. Now, there's another rule to this. You have, that student has to meet with a counselor. They can't just meet with the vice principal or anything. They need to be meeting, meet with your counselor for high school to give them the benefits of graduating with an endorsement. Now, if you remember when we used to have the minimum plan, which we don't have anymore, now we have the House Bill 5 Foundations, and it has three options. 
But when we had the minimum, we would literally convince them they'd burst into flames if they left the school on the minimum plan. That's not the case anymore. We simply tell them the benefits. Now, let me see if I can get back over here and find this document that I like. It's called the Grad Try document. I can send this to you if you like. Um, I really like this document. There it is. And uh, what it allows me to do is break it down visually for you. Now, if you require more than 22 credits, that's fine. Like I know for a fact, if you're over in Frisco, you're going to require 25 credits because they require like a half a credit of health and a half a credit of fine, of uh, um, speech and an additional credit for fine art, not fine arts, uh, uh, computer applications or technology applications. So you are allowed to add more credits to this section. And there is a small section that kind of gives you permission. But if a kid comes in and stomps their feet and the parents mention lawyering up, Remember, the Texas Education Code and the Texas Administrative Code hold that a kid is only required to complete 22 credits to graduate. So your district, you need to consult with attorneys if a kid um, pushes the process for the 22 credits. Please send that up higher. Don't, don't argue or fight that yourself at the campus level. That's a district level decision. Um, just send that through the appeals process. So once a kid starts the foundation, now they can do these simultaneously, obviously, but for a layman, just to put it into easy terms, you need 22 credits plus an additional four to equal 26 credits to earn an endorsement. And then you need to have both of these coupled with algebra two to get to the distinguished level. That's why I'm created this visual document just to help us understand. We no longer have three graduation plans. We have one graduation plan with three options. I hope that visually helps. So let's get back over, there's the CO22. Let me get back over to my slideshow. Get back on track here. We're gonna talk about ELA. If you notice last year, it used to say after successful completion one, two, and three, that's the old rule. Senate Bill 826 is gonna change that now. Uh, and we're just waiting for that to hit. So let's get back over. This is the TEA's version of 7411. Um, and let's get down here, we're gonna keep going. Uh, if you remember, I mentioned that you could override an elective. Actually, that's 74.3. My apologies. Let me get out of that. Close the current tab. And I'm going to close out of this tab. Let me close some tabs so I don't lock my computer up. Thank you for being patient. Here we go. 74.11. Now, the rule I'm going to jump to right now is I'm going to jump down to 74.11 J2. A student may not be enrolled in a course that has a prerequisite unless the student successfully completed the prerequisite or the student has demonstrated equivalent knowledge as determined by the school district. There is no specific prescribed way of determining that. You could use a local uh, test, you could use a Texas Tech or a UT test uh, to demonstrate equivalent knowledge. Um, that's a, a local district policy decision. The only thing I recommend is to do that with uh, care. Now, obviously if we have a kid that's in English three and English four, combine their senior year, they haven't technically met the prerequisite for English 4, and you could cite this rule as your justification, but also you're trying to keep up with PBMAS sections 5 and 6, which under PBMAS holds that we need to graduate kids within their cohort, and we're accountable for that. So one of the things we would explain is that we want seniors to graduate on time and not end up in a fifth year. So that's a good reason to place a child in English 3 and English 4, which would then essentially mean that we're kind of bypassing a, a prerequisite of completing English 3 before English 4, but seeing that it's no longer ordered in the Texas Education Code 28.025B2, um, and that it was adjusted by Senate Bill 826 uh, to allow for us to teach English 3 and 4 together, or English 1 and 2 together, there's no more uh, requirements for completion. So when we get into this part, this has, not been, this has not been updated, so just ignore that. But know that you're supposed to offer English 1, 2, and 3, and that you need to offer English 4 in an additional English class uh, in accordance with 74.3. Then we get down into math. Now, currently, we have math and geometry is the way most people do it. That Senate Bill 826 also helped us with math. So when we get back over to Senate Bill 826 and we start looking, this should say math, not ELA. I apologize. Let me go to – let me change that to math. And that should be – or it's going to be B2, not B1s. It's going to be B2A is how we would read that. So for math, it used to say after the successful completion of Algebra 1 and Geometry, that's going to go away. I do not see them not making it a requirement to have Algebra 1 and Geometry. I'm just telling you that after successful completion of Algebra 1 and Geometry will not be the way you do it. So essentially, you could go Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Precalculus, and then Geometry. 
Um, so with that passing of Senate Bill 826, it'll allow you some options and how you're going to design your math program moving forward at your high school. Back over to Chapter 74, Subchapter B. We're going to move down on the math here. Um, this is what it currently looks like, but I want to go over to the document that allows us to see what it's going to look like moving forward. That's going to be housed on our webpage under, uh, let's see, the 1718 version. You can find that in the uh, on my webpage as well. Uh, so if you're looking for that document and where to find it, uh, you would simply go over to House Bill 5 endorsements. And if you look right there. So under House Bill 5, Basics and Endorsements, it's going to be the third one down. You can download that, and you'll see this exact document that I'm utilizing now. I'm going to go ahead and click out of that. Well, I'll leave that open in case we get back to it because we're going to talk about math. So there's the math. And if you notice, they've added a whole bunch of new math classes, five total, four here, and one down in the additional uh, uh, upper-level maths. Now, here's what I need to explain to you. You're not going to see any of these maths to help you earn an endorsement. So yes, a student can go algebra one, geometry, and take math models and financial math, but you're not gonna earn an endorsement if you do that. A, a, a proper way to do it would be like, say you have algebra one, geometry, math models. I prefer obviously um, ag, what I call ag math, math, math applications, agriculture, food, natural resources, 85% algebra, 15% geometry to replace math models. I'm gonna go back over real quick and show you that certification link again. If we go to that math ag class and we go to chapter 231, as you can see, there are a plethora of people who can teach it. They do need to take the Project Gateway course. Now, let's sidebar for a second back to our web page. When you see this B right here, when you're going to teach a, a CTE for core credit class, and it says all teachers assigned to this course shall participate in a Texas Education Agency approved training, then that's going to point you back to the um, – Project Gateway. It used to be Project Share, and now it's Gateway. So if we go to our web page here, well, wrong web page. Sorry, let me get off that one. That's not the web page I wanted. Close that tab. Here we go. Let me get back over to our House Bill Foundations page. Um, when we get over here, I want y'all to find the document called Gateway Trainings document. So it's called the Gateway da Training document. It is not complete yet because I haven't gotten all the information from the state of Texas. I'm gonna open it on my hard drive here. So if you're teaching any of these classes, they're not gonna have that B. They're not gonna see the B requiring additional training, but I do highly recommend CTE 101, especially if it's a core teacher, so they get the gist of what we're doing with CTE. Any of your agriculture teachers or anybody like with STEM, who's not technically science core certified, that's gonna teach a science CTE class, needs to take the science safety so that we don't have, um, so we don't have anybody, uh, you know, any students getting injured in the science lab. We don't want anybody bursting in the flames, as I like to say. Um, that could really get you a lot of attention. You don't, you don't want or need, and we want to make sure students and you are safe. So please, if you have anybody teaching science classes that is not a science certified teacher, uh, have them complete the science safety course as a requirement by TEA. Now we're waiting for these classes as they are new add-ons to see what the certification and the guidance is going to be on training. Um, math applic applications, agriculture, food, and natural resources. If you elect to replace your math models with what I call ag math, you'll have to complete the six parts. If they are a non-CTE teacher, have them do CT 101. If it was an agriculture teacher, don't worry about that. But uh, what I've done is I've gone in and pulled and given you a link to each one of those, act the actual chapter that they need to complete. See, this is part four, and this is the gateway course. So it just makes it easier for you. So if you're going to be uh, trying to figure out what classes you can do that are both core and CTE, grab that handy uh, gateway document to help guide you along because we're going from 18 to 24 core for CTE credits classes. They're listed on this list right here called my core academic. You have one English, you have 10 math classes, and you have a total of 12 sciences with 14, um, 14 additional um uh, PEAM service ID codes. Uh, if you wanted to replace your, if you have regular speech and you want to earn a CTE credit, you can replace it with professional communications. As of this year, it is only good for half a credit. There's the certification link. Uh, floral design can be used as the fine arts credit in graduation. Let me specify that. Let me go find my grad try document so I can show you what I'm talking about there. 
when I save for graduation credit, you cannot use that floral design to earn a Arch and Humanities. You're not going to find anything from Chapter 130 in the ways you earn Arch and Humanities endorsement. But you can use floral design for this fine arts credit right here. And then you could also use it if you were earning a STEM endorsement as one of your credits in STEM, or excuse me, not just STEM, but any of the endorsements that require CTE as an additional CTE course to help a student earn an endorsement. We'll be doing the endorsement series later. I already have a webinar that's recorded. If you wanted to see um, our webinar on, on the um, endorsements, let me know. We can get you that link. We sent it out on a listserv a couple weeks ago. So back to it here. Let's get back to chapter 74. Okay, so when we get back over here, we're listening, looking at the math classes. Remember, these are what I consider uh, lower tier maths. In order to earn an endorsement, you have to have an Algebra 2 or higher. Now, these two courses here, take a note on this, Algebraic Reasoning and Statistics. Students can take those without taking Algebra 2. They can also take those courses to qualify for an endorsement. However, they cannot earn DLA. Because neither of these courses require Algebra 2 as a prerequisite, they cannot be used to earn a DLA status in top 10% but they can be used if you had a special ed student that just couldn't pass Algebra 2 and they had Algebra, Geometry, and say math models, uh, you could place them in either Algebraic Reasoning or Statistics uh, and they could still earn an endorsement. And as long as you're not using that class to earn the endorsement, it could be modified as well. Um, once again, visit, my, uh, visit us when we have our webinar next week. It's going to be on uh, next Friday. We're supposed to have a webinar on uh, endorsements or I already have a pre-recorded one if you're in a hurry we can get that uh, that uh that link to you uh so these are the math classes that are required so once again my advice to you is to go algebra one geometry algebra two and then you can take any math it's no we're no longer bound with math models it used to be in order to take math models under the old chapter of graduation you had to complete uh math models before algebra two and if you were going to take that ag math class you had to successfully complete Algebra 2 or be concurrently enrolled in Algebra 2 while you were taking the Ag Math. We no longer have anything like that. Uh, once you complete Algebra 1, the only thing that determines if you can take a math class or not is the prerequisite. Um, we suggest Algebra 1 because it's a prerequisite for pretty much everything out there to include a vast majority, if not all, of our agricultural classes. Our upper uh, three upper math classes in agriculture, let me show you what those are. I'll go back up here for a second. Statistics and business decision making, math for medical professionals, and engineering math all require Algebra 2 as a prerequisite. So you can't take those before you take Algebra 2. And you wouldn't want to because you don't want to keep a kid out of DLA, in my opinion. But if a kid's struggling just to graduate um, with an endorsement and we're not worried about that top 10% or distinguished level of achievement, by all means, consider, consider statistics or um, algebraic reasoning. Now for science, back to that science we were talking about. Every kid has to have biology, and every kid has to have one full credit in one of these classes. You can't mix here. So that first two years in high school, I highly recommend biology, and then followed by one of these three. Um, I really like chemistry and physics. I actually prefer principles of technology over physics. If we look at the bottom of our science description here, I'll tell you why. Credit may not be earned for both physics and principles of technology to satisfy science credit requirements. Principles of Technology is physics, and uh, it's a CTE credit, and it draws a whole lot more funding as well. The average school earns anywhere from $285 to $360 for every kid that crosses the threshold of a CTE class. And that means if you've got a kid that's in three classes, they're bringing in $900 more than the kid that's just going to regular classes. So for every, if you had 10 kids taking environmental systems and 10 kids taking, say, um, forensic science, these 10 kids would bring in 3,000 plus additional dollars to the district. These kids would not. This is a core. This is a CTE. Please see my uh, endorsements where I go into a little bit into the funding, show you how to figure out your seeded funding, how much every kid is worth and valued at. Not that that's their value. Um, we know they're worth way more to us than that. That's not what that means. But monetarily, what they bring into the district uh, when they cross the threshold of a CTE class. And research shows that <clears throat> these CTE, especially our core CTE classes, uh, but CTE classes in general have a higher attendance rate, a higher post-secondary readiness rate. Uh, they have higher grade point averages, and they're more successful in the post-secondary world when they take the uh, AP, IB classes. 
um, excuse me, APIB, the CTE classes. I said, <laughs> sorry, I was looking at this right here when I said APIB. Um, anywho, let's move on from science and we're going to move on down and talk about social studies. Social studies is really simple. You need three credits. Two of them have to consist of U.S. history, government, and economics. A lot of people are still using the old 4 by 4 There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so if you're on the 4 by 4 then just know you have no options other than geography, world history studies, government economics, and U.S. history. There is no, if you notice, in this little social studies area, you don't have room to earn a credit in psychology. You don't have room to earn a credit in uh, sociology or anything like that. Those won't be accepted for high school graduation base credit. You're only required three. They got to come from these four. If you're requiring a student to complete four on the four by four, then you can't use any of these down here in the low tech. Let's move on to low tech. Every student in the state of Texas, whether they are general ed, special ed, or 504, fall under the next three options for foreign language. The first two options are very simple. Any levels of the two, two the same foreign language. So any two years of French or Spanish or Russian or German, whatever. Or two credits in computer programming languages. Now let me go back over to the CO22 and show you exactly what we're talking about here. When we get into computer programming, I'm going to type in computer programming. Oops. Oh, no, excuse me. Computer science. I messed up again. Computer Science. I'm going to type in computer science. <laughs> and we should have, there we are. These are the three codes. So if you're going to have a student earn credit for foreign language, LOTE, languages other than English, LOT or LOTE, I call it LOTE, you call it LOTE, apples and what is it, potato, potato. So uh, computer science one, two, and three. Uh, there's three PEAM service ID codes. You cannot use AP computer science for that either. Uh, Pam, who's the director over at um, uh, Carrollton Farmers Branch, is a friend of mine. Uh, she's the one that constantly reminds me of that because we figured that out last year, and she's a champ. So if you're out there, Pam, thank you. So we have discovered that computer science one, two, and three are the only classes you can utilize to satisfy this requirement in Chapter 74, 12, and it's right here. So. You could literally write out those three PEAM service ID codes and only use those two of those three credits. Now, those are the two options open to anybody. You don't need any kind of special permission. You can just do that. Now, if you ask me, are colleges accepting this? We don't have any data. We haven't graduated an official class under 74, 11 through 14. We don't have any feedback. It'll take a couple of years to determine if colleges are going to take that or not. Currently, we, have, we, re, we recommend if you have students headed to college, please re, ask them to take two levels of the same foreign language to keep on the safe side as we work our way through House Bill 5 and how colleges react to these upcoming graduates. Uh, so we don't have any data support a, um, a ba to back up what you would ask if we were to make a recommendation on computer science other than don't do it. Um, or unless you talk to the college personally and they send you a form that says they will accept it. That would be a possibility. Now, if a student in completing the first credit of LOTE demonstrates that the student is unlikely to complete the second credit, the student may substitute another course as follows. But let's jump forward. If you're going to use this option, you got to do this. In determining the ability for this option to happen, we need the teacher of the first LOTE course or another LOTE teacher. We need the district to provide the principal or a designee, and they could appoint the counselor if they wanted to. And we need the student's parent or person in relation. Three people need to be here a LOTE rep, an administrative rep from the school, and the parent or, or a guardian. Then you can go up and talk about this. So after we agree that this is this student's not going to uh, be able to earn a second credit in LOTE, um, or LOTE, uh, <laughs> then uh, we, need to, we can move on this. You can use special topics in language and culture. So watch this. That's one specific class. So when I come over here and I type in special topics, oops, Special topics in language and culture. There we go. So if you're going to use that, you would use an 1141-0000. So that's the class you would use. It's the only one allowed for. So if you're going to try and use a culture class there, that's the one you would use. Let me get back over here to our chapter 74. Make sure you're seeing the same thing I am. So that, that would be that class. Then they could use world history or world geography. If you require 
a student to be on the four by four right now, just don't even worry about that. You can cross that one off. You're not going to use it. If you require three, then it's up to you to make a decision as to which one's going to be used. That's a local district policy decision. Uh, we don't make any recommendations on that from region 10. Um, another credit in uh, chapter 114. So this is the one that you can use to take like, Spanish one, French one, or Spanish one, German one. This gives you the ability to have a student take two years of LOAT uh, in two different languages. Or back to the programming languages. I would say to stay safe, go with computer science one, two, or three. We're going to get guidance from Kelsey Kling on that from TEA, uh, and we'll get back to you. But for right now, if you're doing computer programming language, this is one of your options. Uh, please, please go with computer science one, two, or three in those team service ID codes I pointed out earlier in this session. Now that's for any kid. Now remember this, let me go back. Determining completing the second credit of Lotte doesn't have to mean failure of grade. They have to have the credit completed before they can exercise this option. So if you have a kid that has half a credit in Lotte, they've got to complete that second credit of Lotte before you can use this option to meet with the parent and the principal. So yes, you have to have the first credit completed. This applies to kids that are going to meet with the building principal or their art committee or their 504. Let me go back on that. A general ed kid would follow this process, item number one. Special ed kid, it would go to the ARD. 504 kid, it would go to the 504 Rehabilitation Committee. So just for clarification. Now, that's for all students who attempt or complete uh, English, or excuse me, uh, LOAT uh, one. And it could be a behavior problem. It could be the kid told you they just don't want to take the class and they're going to fail it on purpose. Um, if that's the case, you know, why fight them on it? Uh, let them exercise the options allowable under state law. Now, we're going to start on the part for LOAT that it talks about only special ed students. So here's how I want to break this down. That a student who due to disability is unable to complete two credits in the same language other than English. So they don't even have to attempt. Now, when I say that, it does, does not mean that the policy should become all of your SPED kids go into this option. That is not a great idea. That would really hurt kids. So this should only be used when the art committee really determines that a student is incapable or that their, um, their constraints due to their, due to their um, disability is gonna inhibit them from successfully completing a LOAT uh, credit. Uh, so that's the only reason you would use this. Now, uh, they could use three options. So we're gonna break it down to three options. The first option is any two credits from the four core area. So if you wanted to use math, social studies, a lot of times we use reading one and reading two. I prefer CTE, because I'd prefer to get that kid some career function classes uh, before I would worry about uh, just putting them in a standard reading class because if they're doing the, the correct things in the CT class, they're doing a plethora of reading anyway. So they should be able to support the core academic subject of reading along with learning a skill for career um, to get them out into the workplace. So yes, you have the option to use core. Most people use that reading one and two. I recommend the next one, which is two credits in career and technology, or you can use two credits in technology applications. To make this really simple for you, when you meet with a kid and you determine they're not gonna take foreign language, they're gonna exercise this option D for the load credit, section into three areas of choice. One of the two credits in, two, in, two credits in core, so they can mix math, science, those studies, doesn't matter, or two credits in CTE, or two credits in technical technology applications. Do not mix tech apps with tech ed, or excuse me, with CTE, do not mix like uh, reading one with uh, welding one. Don't do that. Uh, stay holistic to the program. So, um, and then how that looks over here, when we get back over to our little diagram, it's this simple. If you're a counselor, don't get fl frustrated. Currently, you're authorized five electives for a kid. What you would do is you would say, okay, I got five electives. You would just need two more that would plug into the foreign language. So we wouldn't, if we were writing it in and we had two blocks here, instead of writing in Spanish one and Spanish two, we could write in, say, um, Introduction to Culinary Arts and um, BIM2, if that's what the kid elected for, you elected. This does not have to be in a coherent sequence. There are 243 CTE classes. Let the kid take what they like, and my, my recommendation is include the kid in the conversation. Let them tell you what they think is a good, interesting subject for them to take. If they're going to replace foreign language, with a class, I prefer CTE to build career skills. Get them in a class they want to be in. It's easier for everybody and it's better for the kid. For putting kids first, we're not worried about a coherent sequence. We simply need to have 
two CTE or two core or two tech apps. Once again, I recommend CTE. Um, back over here to our, there we go. Nope, wrong one. There we go. So that goes to the art committee or that goes to the 504. Yes, it is authorized for 504 kids as well. They do not have to attempt to take a CTE core or excuse me, a LOTE course, LOTE course, if in fact their disability is a constraint that they can't get past that's going to inhibit them from learning uh, a foreign language. But like I said, don't make this the norm. This should be specialized per student. Physical education. Uh, these are the options for physical education. The one I want to talk about, though, um, is the uh, drill team, the cheerleading. Uh, let's go look at that real quick over here on the CO22 document. So when I type in, I keep in krill. I need to type in drill. <laughs> okay, drill. There we go. So when we get over here to the drill. Uh, we're looking at drill team substitution, cheerleading substitution, um, and marching band. Uh, the way a lot of schools do this is they use the fall. Uh, so the kid has to be enrolled in the uh, band or in the uh, cheerleading uh, for two years in a row. And they use the fall uh, season of football because of all the halftime shows and all the activity. And that guarantees that kid's active. Uh, and they issue a half a credit per school year for a full credit after two school years in physical education. Uh, you can host that as a zero period. Uh, if it's your cheerleading or band or drill instructor, you would put them as a teacher of record. Uh, attendance becomes very important for that, obviously. And uh, that would be housed as a zero period under this PEAM service ID code. So essentially, a student would be taking seven or eight classes, depending on your schedule, and earning either eight or nine credits, um, or like 7.5 or 8.5 for each year of the first two years in high school. Or if they joined, uh, they hadn't taken a PE and they got to your school and they were an academic junior and joined a uh, drill team and did it their junior, their junior, senior year, you could do it that way too. Um, back over here to... 7412. Okay. Let's go past physical education. You can use the RTC as we were talking about earlier. Um, fine arts. Uh, you just need to have one credit in fine arts. If you need any uh, help with that, let me know. Uh, there's not a lot to go into on that one. Uh, one thing I can say is yes, you can mix these. If you're a charter school out there and you got a kid that came in with a half accredited dance level one, and all you offer is music or art, you could put them in the second half of art and combine art and dance or art and music or however you do it um, for a 0.5 credits in each subject to award a full credit for fine arts. Um, I have talked with uh, Shelly Ramos from TEA and gotten that one uh, solidified and sent that out to districts before. Um, and you can use obviously community-based fine arts programs if they're acting and things of that nature. Uh, elective courses are five credits. Um, and then we'll go, then there's the endorsements. Now, as far as today's session went, uh, we were going to discuss um, chapter 7411, 7412, and then uh, the academic, core academic and gateway training. So that, that wraps up our, um, our session today. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, this is recorded. Uh, we will be sending this session out on the listserv. Uh, let me get you back over to my email address. Um, my email address is right here. Uh, and then I'm going to add, let me, let me add one more little deal here. I'm going to add Jason Cooper. So it's jason.cooper at region10.org. Uh, you can reach out to either one of us for support for CTE. Uh, this is my phone number. I apologize. I don't have Jason's right off the top of my head for you. Um, also, uh, Sandy, uh, Benavitez, she's on our counseling department. I don't want to put her email in here because I, I'm not exactly positive what it is verbatim right this minute, uh, but she's part of our counseling department. She is new to Region 10, is awesome, uh, coming out of Irving ISD. Uh, so we have some really great people that have joined us here at Region 10 that you can reach out to for assistance. Uh, once again, uh, please email me with any questions or concerns. I am not at my phone number today. I do apologize. I am on the road. I am currently sitting in Belton, Texas at Starbucks. So if you drive by, honk and wave. I'm going to be here for a few more minutes. I hope today's session was educational. Um, and then uh, have a great day. Have a great weekend. And thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and end um, today's session.